me. So the question is about Kabbalah Masit. First of all, the Rizal uh, says few places that Kabbalah Masit is forbidden. Um, and it seems that the Rav Chaim Vital, that is like the main student of the Rizal, before he met the Rizal, he was involved in Kabbalah Masit. He was? He was. And that's why I understand he asked like few times in different occasions the Rizal, what's the reason it's not allowed? And the Rizal gave him a few reasons. So let's go over the, the reasons that he's giving. And then afterwards we'll speak about like different traditions that, uh, that were dealing with Kabbalah Masih. So first of all, the Rizal says that we don't really know like how to do it. Okay, he says that uh, all, of the, all of the names that we can find in different books have, like many of them have mistakes. And, we, and it's not reliable, okay? And that's talking about in time of the reason. How much more so about for us? Like mm -hmm. today, if you'll say some, for someone, you know, this is a book from the time of the reason, so then he will say, ah, so for sure it's, for, it's uh, legit. For sure it's, uh, you know, but you see, even the reason in his time, he said that the books that he had, had mistakes, and it, you can't rely on it. So that's one thing. Second thing that is the most famous, I guess, is that he says that that we are not pure. We have the impurity of the of the dead. We don't have the ash of the red cow. So therefore, when we're not pure, so we can't deal with it. Okay, that was in an answer for the for the question of Rav Chaim Vital that he asked, like, how can you say it is forbidden? We see in the Mishnah and the Gemara that they were doing doing that. They they did kmeot. So the reason answered him that they had the ashes of a paraduma, so they were pure, and we don't, so we can't do it because we're not pure. Okay? And last point um, is that he says that the person that is worthy to deal with it is someone that is in such a high level that even the angel of death is not criticized against him, that like all of the all of the angels all of the people loves him because he's, he have like just good deeds there's, there's, there's nothing that no one can say against him so someone like that is worthy to do Kabbalah Masit but otherwise no okay that's that's basically the the reasons that are found in the writings of the Rizal um, can speak about that more in different different time but <coughs> now let's speak about different traditions okay except of the reason so there is first of all um, important note from the Vilnagon that he brings in one of the one of these commentaries for the Tikunezor he writes that to do Kabbalah Masit properly so the person have to know how those names of angels or whatever he's dealing with are receiving their nourishment from the Yudke Vavke mm. okay something like that that's what he's saying and that's that's first condition second condition that the Vilnagon gives is that the purpose that the person is doing that is not for self-interest is to help other people to help Klal Israel not not something that is like for himself okay now <coughs> also with that there is a certain tradition that <coughs> I heard that it was also from the Vilna Gaon, but it, it doesn't say that there in the in the writings of the Vilna Gaon. It's like more of an old tradition that it will be allowed only if it will save like like a crowd of Amisrael. It seems that it's talking about like minimum amount of, of minyan of ten people. 
like to save to save like life of ten people or more. So then it's like that. Then it's it's uh, enough of a reason to use it. Otherwise, no. Um, there is a story about one of the students, student of a student of the Vilna Gaon, that were in. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Hungary. I'm not sure like exactly where there in Europe, like just before the the Nazis came, and like they 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 had a doubt what is more dangerous to move that everybody like the whole community will leave their village and like try to go somewhere or to stay in the same place because maybe moving is more dangerous so they had a doubt and they they were using like Kabbalah Masid to get an answer like what is the right thing to do to save the community so that like when I heard it so that was the example that the rabbi that I spoke with gave as like something that it will be it will be like a good enough of a reason to use Kabbalah Masid when so there's something that is like life of a crowd of a misfit. Okay, now. And what ended up happening there? Um, I think I think that they, they, they moved and they they got to US. It's one of the communities that got to the US. Oh, wow. Anyhow <coughs> Shalom Alechem. Um, so the last the last point is about about the tradition of some Sephardi communities from Morocco, from Iraq, that they have all, all kinds of uh, sugulot that it seems like Kabbalah Masid. So how does that work? They they knew about the writings of the Rizal. So simply they had a different tradition. So even though they had some writings of the Arizal, but they kept they kept the tradition that they had. Okay? So basically before the Arizal, it was something that was quite accepted, seems to be. And many, many places, many communities, they didn't accept this uh, prohibition that the Arizal came with. And they kept on their tradition. That's, that's the simple answer. A uh, more sophisticated answer is that, it, like, it doesn't really hold, but I'll say it anyhow. It's brought down in uh, one of the books of Rav Yaakov Ades, Shlita, that he had, uh, he had a very close relationship and tradition from Rav Kaduri, mm. that was one of those rabbis that came from Iraq, and he was doing all kinds of zgulot and, uh, and uh, kmeot. <coughs> so he writes that those kmeot, it was not going against the prohibition of the Arizal because the Arizal said it's not allowed to do, to force the angels to do something. But the way that those gulot worked was asking them to do different things, mm -hmm. not forcing them. So if you're not forcing them, so then, then it's legit. Okay? And there is people that are like trying to go in this line to do like a uh, Kabbalah Masid but changing the the wording of the Kamea from like forcing to asking now I have I happen to met like meet some of some of the students of Rav Kaduri Zatzal and they told me that they saw in their eyes like Kamea of Rav Kaduri that it was like the the language that he was using in the Kamea, it was like forcing the angel. So it doesn't really hold. That's why I said it. But yeah. there is there is a there is a certain approach like that to make this uh, differentiation. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> there is th things that are brought down in the writings of the Arizal himself that looks like Kabbalah Masid a little bit. Um, and then that will be another question of how to relate to that. Like if, like you just said, it's not allowed. So what what are you doing here? So one thing is to say, yes, you have those things that are not Kabbalah Masid. So the same thing will be like other Kmeot and Sgulot that those uh, righteous people did. That it doesn't fall into the box of the forbidden Kabbalah Masid that the Rizal said. So what exactly is the prohibition? 
it's very hard to say. It's very hard to say. It's not. There's no like clear definition. I didn't find a clear definition. Um, so just to finish the, the to close the mark and to connect that to what what I said in the, in the name of the Vilna Gaon, it seems to be that the connection with Hashem, the first uh, garment is the name Yud Kevavke. So when someone is he knows the the connection with the light of Hashem, then then everything is good because there's unity. And the problem seems to be I'm not saying that as a halacha. I'm saying that like that's my understanding right now. After my little research about it, and that someone that that he, he doesn't know how to make this connection and is using some kind of a force without connecting that to the source of the light so then it becomes to be a like separate entity so it be, it goes like in line with al worshiping and then it becomes to be forbidden but when someone he knows what he's doing and is he knows how to do this connection with the light of Hashem and then then it, there's unity and there, there's no danger so obviously as much as you're going out from the from the inner connection to the external worlds to the external dimensions so then it becomes to be more complicated to make this connection right as much as you're closer so the connection is closer so it's easier as much as you're going out it becomes to be harder so the names of angels that are related to the external worlds it becomes it's more it it's much more uh, challenging and to the point of almost impossible for someone that is not in the highest level to make this connection and then by definition it creates separation and then it falls into the prohibition and then it creates damage in the spiritual worlds and then a person will suffer uh, unless he will do the tikkun like we saw that in Shavu HaGodesh the Arizal brings the tikkun for that what's the reason because it's like a sin to create separation that's what happens when someone is doing a sin so to do that in the wrong way without unity by default it will be a separation which is sin which is which needs tikkun and then if someone doesn't do that the tikkun is suffering and i know i know in person and i heard in like first hand about more than few people that they were trying to do all kinds of things like that and they suffered physically emotionally spiritually they suffered and i don't know why they continued maybe it's like addiction i don't know but uh, like it, they suffered I, I know about people that they suffered and like all of those different like uh, pe <coughs> stories about people that are getting crazy and doing things that are you know like whatever yeah. uh, all kinds of things like that and like the danger of Kabbalah and the, and the, you know like all of those different things is is mostly about the Kabbalah Masi that's like a, a dangerous zone so um, it's not so, it's not it's not something to play with it's like uh, you know radioactive uh, materials mm -hmm. you know if you don't have the right equipment to protect yourself you know you don't want to deal with it yeah. you want to stay away and even someone that he, he does have the equipment, he does have the knowledge, he knows what he's doing, should be very, very careful because it's, uh, you know, serious stuff. And someone that he, that he, do, he doesn't take it seriously, so then for sure he's making like a big mistake. Only blessings for everybody.